as a nation, we have been unbelievably lax and passive about the sale of our democracy to the highest bidder, about this political system turning into the best democracy that money could buy. And that has to change. You know, we, 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 we need to be mobilizing by no means on everything, but I think on these two key issues, climate change and party funding reform, because we, we simply cannot address the first unless we're also addressing the second. Because it seems to me that there is absolutely no other way that we can prevent the next 50 months from going the same way as the first 50 months unless we, we change that very small and eminently changeable thing which forces them at the cost of their political careers to represent instead the unelected corporations who have no humanity and no human rights, they don't belong to a democratic system, yet which have effectively taken over our democratic system. I want to see my own city a carbon zero city. That is my dream. You have to go to where people are. And where people are in cities is you have to look at their trigger points. And that's what I want to do, is part of a movement where I open my heart and I really travel to where people are, worried about their children's futures, about what their parks look like, look where they're going to put their mum when she's old, and build that into a great carbon zero sustainable narrative. Uh, people are like, that's my trigger point. That's why I am doing this. And I want to be part of, of that movement. You know... People bandy this word around relevant. Oh, we need to make ourselves more relevant. Like it's a magic spell, relevant. Relevant means going to people, listening to them, and addressing their... Getting involved in their lives. That's what relevant means. Yeah, and all I want to do is initially just plot up what us climate scientists have been up to um, as we've jetted around the world um, solving climate change. The first report came out in... Um, 1990. The Rio Earth Summit was in 1992. Notice the nice purple line. See what it's doing here. And the second report from this UN um, body came out in uh, 95. David King, climate change is the most dangerous threat that we face, 2004. Look at the emissions going up here. As soon as King spoke, the emissions rocketed. Um, <laughs> the fourth report came out in 2007. We had a bit of a shindig in Copenhagen um, in 2010. 9, 10, or 9, December, Rio 2020. Now, look at it. We've doubled the emissions. The more academics fly around the world talking about climate change, emissions just keep on going up. That's the sort of future we're heading to. This is a relatively low mitigation scenario. We're doing some things, but not a lot. And that's four to six degrees sometime during this century. And that's what we've signed up to. Just look at the gap between the two. And that's an outside chance of two degrees C. If anyone says that we can't afford to make a better world, then tell them they're lying, especially if it's George Osborne. Because the cuts that he is driving forward at the moment are not only socially devastating, they are economically illiterate. There is plenty of money out there. The issue is who has it and how it's created. You know, we've managed to put in huge amounts, 400 billion almost, of quantitative easing into the economy, but we haven't felt the benefit of it because we gave it to the private banks and they sat on it. If you were to put some of that money directly into the economy, into the small businesses that are crying out for it, into retrofitting every building in the country, into building the renewable energy infrastructure that we need, then that would make a difference. If you crack down on the tax evasion and tax avoidance, 120 billion easily, that would make a difference. Even just a Robin Hood tax, 20 billion in the UK alone, slashing Trident, 100 billion. It's not difficult, it's about political will, and fortunately political will is a renewable resource. We are obliged to rebel against that dissatisfaction about who we are as human beings, to not get on that treadmill, to not keep on wanting more and more, buy into this notion of inevitable, continual growth of which we are the victims. We need to be happier to have less. Austerity sounds terrible, but if austerity is simple living, I mean just the sort of human, ordinary lives where we love and care for each other, if we can put that at the heart and not, as I say, the values of Westfield Shopping Centre, that is the sort of revolution of the heart that the preacher always dreams of. And that is the revolution of the heart that is required in order to turn these graphs that keep on going up and up and up into something different.